Water blast is not as quick per square foot as a sandblast hose, but you got to look at how much labor is involved with the sandblast, and you're, you're using a material that you know you're using tons of it when you're out there trying to grip blast the ship. And then you got to get rid of it. You got to wrap the ship up. The other big advantage I've always seen is just like when the rain comes, you can't grip blast. When the rain doesn't stop the hydro blast, so you got to look at all the pros and cons. Yeah. And it's, you know, and I, I grew up grip blasting, and the hardest thing for me in the world was to do was convert the water, but once you get used to doing it, I mean, it's the way to go. I mean, we water blast, we continue doing shaft work, we're replacing steel on the ship. Everybody's, all the top side work continues, you don't have the sh ship sealed up. It's more convenient for the crew on the ships, than we found out, because they don't have to take the people off the ship, the people are able to stay on it while you're doing the preservation work. In days of grip blast and you'd almost have to evacuate the ship, close it up, seal it up, because you're shutting all the ventilation down. For grip blasting, you, you're supposed to have 100% containment. And uh, we've had um, ships come here before that the owners, the first thing they tell us, you know, the one thing they appreciate about the water is, you know, three months down the road, you're not tearing an anchor windlass as you're doing, pulling grit out the center of them. You know, so it's got us a lot, a lot of advantages. Basically what you're looking at production rates, you know, in water, if you're a hand lance and you're looking at, you know, 35 to 40 square feet an hour compared to a sandblast hose where you probably get 90 to 100 square feet an hour. Bigger areas, we put the robots up there and the robots are doing anywhere from two to 300 square feet an hour. So it's just weighing apples and oranges, you know, but but the robots you got and the handguns we got these days, if you're doing a major project, it's a lot of flat steel, you're, you're coming out way ahead using water. I mean, and you know, and the other thing, everybody talks about the parts you got to buy. Well, yeah, you're buying parts for your packings and whatever you need for your guns and everything, but you're not buying grit. And grit's expensive. I mean, you're not only buying it, you got to pay to dispose of it. So, I mean, you, you're paying for it coming in, you're paying for it going out. So, yeah, well, you figure these dry ducks out there. I mean, if we were grit blasting, first you'd have to contain for the grit blasting, which we don't have to with water. And then once it's all said and done, you, well, you do your wrap up, you do your blasting. When it's all said and done, now you got to clean all that mess up, and it's all in the dry dock drains. It's everywhere, you know. And you've been under trying to paint the ship, and wind comes along. And the next thing you know, there's still dust laying on the edges and stuff, and it's blowing back into what you're trying to paint. Water, you don't have that problem. With the sand application, you've got to sandblast the whole boat, and then you've got to come back and wash it because you've got to keep the water in distance from the sand. If not, you end up with a bunch of mud. So it's just more efficient to use the water blast. It's less time spent setting up everything. Uh, it's better on the environment, you know, as far as I'm concerned. And it's just a lot easier to do and a lot less headache. With Aquadon and the one trigger setup that we have, you can swap out and just hold the hose with one hand and blast with one, and then you can switch out when you get tired. You know, so it's, it's just more efficient, and it's a lot easier than dragging around a sandblast hose. If you were to try to do that with a sandblast application, You'd have to shut it down. You have to sit there and get a couple guys to refill your sand pot. You got to get the guys to shift the hose down, move the pot. All you got to do to the aquadine is just hook a fork truck up to it, slide it down on the other end, and just keep going while you while you're doing it. There's no need for you to stop for anything. All our aquadines run 40,000 psi. We've got other units that run less than that. And as much as you can give out, that machine will take it from you. And another thing about the aquadines is we don't have to worry about having air supply pressure to the unit because it's got its own air supply on board. So that makes it great for us because we lose power on this drawdown quite often and we lose air pressure. And with those, we don't ever have to worry about that. As long as we got gas, we can keep going. Probably the best thing out on the market right at the moment.